Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Over the holidays, we won a couple of giveaways on YouTube, which is pretty cool. The first one was from Ravenhawk Coins, who sent me a really neat 1962 nickel. Our fourth place winner is the Arizona Ghost Riders. Wow, it's a very cool collectible piece. Thank you, Ravenhawk. Fortunately, Bill took it and used it to go buy some Irish whiskey, so. The second one was from In the Kitchen with Elisa, which is a cooking channel. And the winner is... Arizona Ghost Riders. Say to you, what you doing watching a cooking channel? You're a gunslinging rapscallion. Well, yeah, I am. But I like to eat. Well, Elisa sent me a whole bunch of goodies that she made from scratch. One of them was the Ghost Riders logo made in fondant. If you're not sure what fondant is, it's that pliable icing that they use on cakes and they sculpt it into different shapes. It was pretty cool and I can't wait to eat it when I get home. So thanks Elisa and thanks Ravenhawk Coins. Okay, we had an episode to do, didn't we? Yeah, we got an episode to do. Let's get going. This turn of the century Ivor Johnson brake top revolver belonged to Rattlesnake Pete's dad, Cobra Carl. Here comes Cobra Carl. No, just kidding, that wasn't his name. Now, Pete grew up in a ranch out here in Tucson where his dad worked, and he pretty much carried this gun all the time. We are helping Pete get outfitted to do this period crack stuff, and the holster he had for this gun was a stapled piece of thin leather with a snap closure. Not really period correct. Pete wanted a cross draw that would keep the gun out of the way of his active hand while working his claim. Since most holsters of the period were made from a single thickness piece of leather, I grabbed a 7 8 ounce chunk from my stash. Now I don't have a pattern for an Ivor Johnson, so I had to make one. This book, How to Make Holsters from Al Stolman, shows me how to make my own pattern for any handgun, complete with different carry styles. Now the rest of it I already know. Cross draw holsters were designed to rest right below the waistline on the weak side of the body. It was a popular method for those on horseback because a hip holster didn't conform properly when on the horse. Some cowboys, and even gunmen, were known to just tuck it in their belt. Whether it's faster compared to a strong side depends on the owner, I would say. Don't leave the fun down out. Yeah, okay. The next step is tracing out the pattern and cutting it out of the leather. I think the design I'll use will just be a simple border stamp. The next stage is the most time consuming. For this, I use waxed linen thread, two needles, an awl, and a bottle of bourbon. Sewing leather, another reason for Santee to drink whiskey. Some famous frontier men and women carried their revolvers in a cross draw, including Wild Bill Hickok, Calamity Jane, and a few Texas Rangers. Today the sport of cowboy action shooting has brought the cross draw holster to a new popularity. Shooters generally need to have two six guns to fill them bad guy targets full of lead. Well, here's the finished holster. It came out pretty good, I think. Let's see how Pete likes it. Hey, Santee, look at this. Look at that little holster you can. My good buddy Santee made that for me. <laughs> but that's perfect. That's for, where it's supposed to go. That's where it's supposed to go. Great. Yeah. Well, looks like old Pete really liked his holster. And you got to learn a little bit about cross draws. And my fondant got eaten. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on down the trail.